Are you tired of players slowing down the game with all these long rests? Well, I got a full-blown rest system that'll increase the pacing of your game and increase role play. Coming up. Welcome to the Dungeon Coach. I'm the Dungeon Coach. I'm gonna help you lower that DC in your game by lowering leisurely long rests and doubling down on downtime. You know how hard that was to say? In this video, we're gonna go over what this homebrew is fixing about the current short and long rest systems. Then I'm gonna introduce the system by showing you how I tweak short rest, long rest, and introduce the third type of rest called a full rest. We've got a ton of new subscribers recently, but I was looking at something that blew my mind. 78% of the people that are watching this channel are not subscribed. So what that means is if these 78% spend a few seconds and hit that little red button, we'd be at almost 10,000 subscribers. That would take this channel to a whole nother level and is my end of the year goal. So if you do like what you see here, then hit that button because it really does help get this channel out there to help more people. So enough of all that, let's get into the video. I feel like long rest in the fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons can be abused by players. How many times have you had your players in your dungeon? The next fight is the boss. The tension is building. They're right outside his lair. Hey guys, I think we should stop and take a long rest, you know? So we're at full health? Yeah. So now you're in a weird spot pacing and tension wise because your players now have to spend eight hours resting and now they'll be magically healed back up to 100% health no matter how messed up they were. The first thing I'm trying to fix here is this pacing and tension issue. The buildup is absolutely killed when your players have to stop for eight hours. The second part is now as the DM, you have to actually run those eight hours. Especially if you're in a dangerous area, you can't just have the time fast forward because then they would do it even more. So now you're stuck maybe throwing stuff at them like patrols or creatures that come at them to try and keep that tension high. But even with long rests that aren't in a dungeon and you're just traveling down a road, this has still felt clunky to me. You need six hours of no activity and two hours of light activity where you could also keep watch. But how do you keep watch in a group of three if each player only has two hours to keep watch, you're gonna have two hours unaccounted for. So nobody keeps watch. And even if you do have a fourth player to fill in that slot, that still leaves four shifts to keep track of. This all just feels a little off to me. But with my system, players can actually do these watch shifts together, which gives some role play and character bonding moments instead of four lone wolf shifts. The third thing is this magical full heal that happens. It's gonna take a lot more than a six hour nap if you were just within inches of your life. The fourth is short rest, and of course they're weaker than long rest, but if we buff short rest just a little bit, it'll give more dynamic choice when choosing what type of rest you need. Fifth is it's never made sense to me for them to be actually sleeping during these high stress long rests. The need to take a long rest comes from either needing sleep or resetting your abilities and health. So I've separated that. And the last thing is since long rests are so good, players never feel like they actually need to have true downtime. So this system will also weave in some downtime throughout your adventures. So for my homebrew rest system, I'm gonna buff short rests, nerf long rests, and add full rests. For the short rest, the only thing I'm changing is how long it takes to actually have one. And this is a homebrew that a lot of people already do anyway. So for me, a short rest only takes 10 minutes. This just makes far more sense to me when your adventurers finish up a fight and everything settles down, they have some time to lick their wounds, catch their breath, and recover. They can use some items, have some small conversations, and be ready for more. Why does this need to take one hour? Maybe this feels bad because of my coaching background. In sprint trading, the anaerobic energy system you use for these explosive moments recovers in about five minutes, so 10 minutes is plenty. This also keeps the pace of things going with short rest being more appealing and then maybe not taking so many long rests. And speaking of long rests, there's only two changes here, one to the time and one to the healing. In the rules as written, long rests are eight hours with two of those being light activity and six of them being no activity. So for my system, long rests are three hours of light activity and three hours of no activity. This helps with that clunkiness of keeping watch and now two players can effectively keep watch if they need to. And if you wanna get a little more technical here and interrupt a long rest, here's a variant rule. So now we have a variant rule of a homebrew. Whoa. I rule it to where the first three hours is when they get half their hit dice back and the second three hours is when the spells reset. And for one of my groups, I made a customized half long rest for them. So for this three hour rest, they gained some hit dice back, but I used a mechanic already in the game from the wizard class, Arcane Recovery. So they would gain a little bit of health and a little bit of spells and they really liked it. But wait, coach, you can't take another class's feature because what if you have a wizard and now they don't feel as special? That is one of the biggest complaints I get about some of the homebrews I do when you take other class features and use them as homebrew. That is a totally valid concern. And in this group I'm talking about, there was no wizard, so that didn't matter. And another example of this would be from my combat rules video. I try and buff up the help action with stealing from bardic inspiration. So if you have a bard in your group, then don't do that. But if you don't, then why not? Take all those cool mechanics from classes that aren't represented at your table. So keep those things in mind when implementing your own homebrew. Time out. 
This long rest system can also massively boost the role play between your players. How I run it is if I have a group of four players, every long rest there's two shifts, each of the three hours. Once my group finishes describing the setup for their long rest, I ask them what two players are gonna keep watch, and then I ask them a very important question. So what do you two talk about? It seems like a very simple question, but it goes a long way. This gives those two players a moment to talk to each other one-to-one. -one. I've talked about this a little bit before in my travel video, but this is a huge moment for more inexperienced or shy role players to open up. Now, they're not gonna be super talkative at first, but if you consistently ask this question, they'll know it's coming and they'll start thinking about who do I wanna to talk to and what do I say? I've seen so many cool moments come from those one-on-one -on -one player interactions. Okay. Wait, coach, you said you're gonna nerf long rests, and so far, all you've done is buff them by shortening down the time. Okay, okay, so now it's time for that healing change. This one's simple and connects into the current short rest system and makes hit dice more useful. I don't know about you guys, but hit dice as a resource feel very neglected to me. You almost never run out of them, so it's never a problem. So with my system, long rests do not full heal characters. Instead, you have to actually use your hit dice in the same way you do for short rests. Just let that sink in on how much that actually would make sense in the big picture. If that was the real rule, what would that make your players do? It makes hit dice more relevant of a resource because you actually need them to possibly get back to full health. And if you've been using them all up in those short rests, you might not have any left. But don't worry, you still recover half of your maximum hit dice during a long rest. This makes your players have to think. Those spellcasters can use up the remaining spell slots for healing. Or really think about managing their resources better like healing potions. I think this type of gameplay can be a win across the board compared to, yep, you heal all the way up, everything's back to full. Maybe you only use this type of rule while players are actually in a dungeon, because that's when it really shines. Players have to actually manage their hit dice, spells, and other resources to survive the battle of attrition through these dungeons without some magical full heal. So if they do want to fight that final boss at full power, they better be super creative and manage their resources to be able to do it. So here's an example of how this might look at my table. We'll do this from the perspective of a level 8 fighter named Joe. Freaking Joe. To keep things simple, he's level 8 with 8 hit dice and 80 health. So at 100% health, this is what he looks like. We'll say Joe gets into a small fight or two, and now he's down to 30 health. The group decides to catch their breath and take a quick 5-10 to 10 minute short rest. No need for a long, elaborate bunker. He spends 5 of those hit dice to heal back up to full. We're just going to assume when he rolls his hit dice, he just gets a 10 to keep it easy. Whew, quick breather, ready to go. On their way towards the end of this dungeon, a large fight breaks out against some hobgoblins and Joe gets down to five health. Whew, close call. The group's now hurting at different levels and they decide to take a long rest. They go and find a safe place to bunker down in and usually how well that description is is how nice I am to them with what happens. I ask them who's gonna take those two person watch shifts and if they talk about anything before this final battle. So Joe only has five health left and only three hit dice left. At the very beginning of this long rest, you can use your hit dice right away. Think of it like a mini short rest connecting to the long rest. So in this first little window here, Joe uses all three hit dice to try and heal back up, going from five health to 35 health. Long rest starts happening and midway through, he gets half of his hit dice back. So out of that total of eight, he gets four back. And now since he has them back, he can use them again to try and get to full health. So during the second half of this long rest, he uses all four hit dice that he just got back to get up to 75 health. Whew, almost max health and he's ready for battle. But be careful now, because this is what he looks like compared to what the rules as written system would look like of this. Just full resetting everything would take away from that wearing down feel of going through this dungeon. And everything that happened before wouldn't matter as much. But I don't feel that this represents what happened before, that grueling adventuring day. And keep in mind, this is just from Joe's perspective. The rest of his party could be totally fine or in a lot of trouble. You'll be set up for this final combat based on what came before. Now this brings me to the new rest that I'm calling a full rest. Now for this, I'm gonna be purposely vague here because sometimes I feel like rules explicitly stated can restrict the creativity and customization that DM should have. So a full rest is that true reset of everything. Hit dice back to full, health and spells. And as a little bonus, I've also had my players roll an extra hit dice and gain that much temporary health on top of it because they feel so good. This full rest is obtained from actually sleeping in a safe area with usually a bed. Back to my coaching background for a second. Usually before or after a huge competition, you have a rest or recovery day. This is not a day where you just lay in bed and you can have some light activity, but this just would not include adventuring and almost dying. So to gain this full rest, it takes a certain amount of days. And why do I say certain amount? Well, it's gonna be different depending on each group. Here's some factors to think about when deciding how many days this full rest takes. First is the pacing of your story. Is there something pressing that needs to be handled right away or can it wait and they can enjoy some more leisurely activities? 
How big of a fight were they just in and how draining was it for them to be able to fully recover? And last, what kind of players do you have? Some groups might love the role play and character development that can happen with downtime and some groups might not like it at all. So with all these factors in mind, think of how many days would make sense for your group in this situation. A lot of times this will be only one or two days, but there's been times where I've had it be a week, a month, or even a year. But what if they're in such dire circumstances they don't have access to this full rest system? Deep down to the Underdark or in another plane of existence? If too much time passes without being able to full rest, I have to make constitution saving throws to gain stacks of exhaustion. Look at that, another underused mechanic used in this system. This is your call as the DM to see how much of that worn down feel that you want to give them. So I don't use that part too much, but I do when appropriate. One of my favorite things about this system is it smoothly weaves downtime in between your adventures. So if this video gets 300 likes, I'm going to do a follow-up video on downtime. This was one of the bigger mistakes I made earlier on DMing was my players were always running around from one bad thing to the next. So once I slowed down with some downtime, it really opened up a whole new part of the game. Time out. Disclaimer here. Making these changes to short and long rest can affect some of the power of different classes. With this system, warlocks look a lot more appealing. I personally haven't felt the need to do this, but if you feel like some things are too strong, you can change them from short to long rest or long rest to once a day. And I've even homebrewed some custom abilities that only reset on a full rest. So as with all of my homebrew, don't be afraid to make some adjustments that feel right for you. So I hope this has been another unique system to add to your table or inspire you to make some of your own. And if you like these type of systems, I've done multiple videos and I have a homebrew playlist right here. I've done things all the way from travel to death and resurrection. If you want to check out my newest series on all the planes of existence, then click right here. So until next time, stay creative and think outside that box. Peace.